exercise. All right, so we go there. And so the exercise is that I give, we go back to the other example where we had this FASTA file with a bunch of sequence, so text sequence, ATGCs and stuff. And you have your sequence similarity function. And your goal is to try and optimize them for with using either NumPy, Numba, or Cython, preferably all three, and try to see which one gives you the best, what are the sort of tricks that you can put in place. Try to think and try to get the best performance that you can. Let's say that this is kind of really the challenge there. Um, I, it has happened a few times and have been quite surprised by some of the results that people have come up with and with very, very good improvement of performance. So my hopes are up. Okay, so now we want to try and optimize this. I think that now you have seen that these various methods, they all kind of can work, but and on the very simple example that are provided in their documentation, they work super, super, super well. But as soon as you try and apply them to stuff a bit different than what ex does exactly thought for them, you can see some, you can have some varying degree of success. And it's perfectly normal. And it's also part of the learning curve to learn how to and when to apply them takes also a little bit of time and practice. So don't hesitate to come back to this sort of exercise later on. Right, so we have our two functions. First is sequence similarity. Okay, takes two sequence, compute the similarity between them by just going through a list. And if they are the same thing, you have plus one to little similarity scored, which you then divide by the length of the sequence. And then this just wraps that function for all pair of sequence in there, all right? And we, when we time it, we see that, okay, it's fairly slow, right? Because there is only 500 sequence of small size. And so you, but it still take a third of a second. And then we may want to change that using uh, our various libraries. So first thing first, and I will spare you that one, but you can already get the times to speed up very easily by just using the little trick that we had used earlier. Remember, if j under i continue, and then here you just say that the matrix is equal to itself, but in... Um, but in symmetry, all right? So just remember that one. We will we will forego that trick uh, for, for now, okay? Because we want to focus maybe more on the, on, on the libraries themselves and what they do. But remember that this should always kind of be your first go-to, right? Okay? Because this will always work. So just remember that. And now we are going to try and see what we can get um, without uh, relying on that. Presuming that you've already removed uh, redundant stuff, like if, for instance, our similarity measure was not symmetric, we could not apply that. So, yeah. Okay, so now, first, let's start with Numba. Numba, I think, is always a very good, like, first approach. Uh, maybe NumPy or Numba, uh, but Numba is nice because it's just a decorator and it can get us very good results. So there is just the exact same code. Okay, but with the at JIT there. And now, if you try and run this, you will encounter a first little problem there. Okay, so let me try that directly. Okay, let's say I just take that and try it out, and I will just apply uh, this function there and see what we get, one, two. What you see is problematic stuff, okay? That's mostly a Numba pending deprecation warning. So in itself, that's not an error, but that's something that you might want to care about, okay? What they say is that right now you use a type that is scheduled for deprecation type reflected list found for argument LSEC, okay? so. We don't know exactly what is a reflected list, 
but we know that it has to do with this argument there. It's not very happy with our list. For so second little thing, we see that our performance is actually worse than before. So first let's try and address this little part. So this, if you go in, because they are nice, they give you this little link there, you will learn that what they call a reflected list is a list um, here that could potentially be changed inside this uh, inside the function and in Python function that's fine and that's something that you can do. But in whenever when you have a a a relationship between um, this uh, list, for instance, uh, sorry, when you have a relationship to account for an interface to account for between two languages such as Python and C, it becomes a nightmare. And so they, did, they decided that they would deprecate uh, the support for this sort of feature. And so they let you know that. So then the way that they propose that you go around that is uh, by building a little interface and so that's what I built here, where you from numba.type you import list with an uppercase there. And then you create that list that uses about the same exact uh, code that they propose to use in when you follow that link. And then you feed that to the function. Okay, so maybe we do that. And next, if we do this, all right and we call it again, I will just uh, do it now just with N1 so that it, it goes a bit faster to run. Now you see we don't have the warning anymore. We are still not that much faster, but at least we don't have the warning anymore. Okay, next, of course, again, I know that I'm kind of fighting a losing battle there, but I still want to spend a bit of time on that. Before we care too much about the time here, eh, we have to check that we do, that we would get the same result, okay? Because if you have a function that is faster or something, it doesn't really matter if you don't get the same result in the end. So you need to check that you still get something that is good. Here, there is not too much risk because we did only very minimal change, but nevertheless, it's nice to check. So here I propose two ways of doing that. The first is I create a set of random sequences, and then I check that both functions return to me the exact same uh, result, all right. And then the second one would be more, maybe more visual, okay. And I just create very small example where it's fairly easy to compute um, manually what would happen. Like you know that this one and this one there is one uh, and then two differences, and then here six and so on and so forth. And so I can just apply both and check that they return the same matrix. Here, they do. And so I am happy to say that at least the function performed the same way. And then of course, now what's, once we have checked what they do, we can actually measure and benchmark the two implementations. And then of course, what we have seen there is that actually it performs worse. Okay, so that's really not like here, Numba fails to do it match. It's magic basically, yeah. So not always that simple. Here, the main problem is, I told you, Numba is super good with numbers, but when it comes to anything else, it's actually quite bad, okay? And you see that in action. So something to think about, all right? Okay, so that's with the Numba one. Are there any questions at this stage or have you done things differently there? No questions? Everything good so far? I know it's getting a bit late. Maybe some of you are getting a bit tired. Yes. Ah, some signs of life. At least one person is alive. All right. For the rest, we'll have to see. Okay. So the next one would be to go to maybe NumPy. So NumPy solution, 
uh, I describe here a little bit what I do. But here the idea is to say, okay, rather than do a for loop with NumPy, what we can do is we can say, okay, we have a NumPy.array. Oh, what doesn't it type? Oh, sorry. Okay, there we go. Yeah, NumPy.array. And then we have like maybe one, two, three. Okay, and then we have another NumPy array, which is maybe one and then it's different and then it's the same, for instance, one, four, three. And what we can do is an equal, equal, and then we get true, false, true. Okay, so we get false for everything that is different and true for everything that is the same. And so then if we sum this thing, the true is considered a one and the false it considers a zero. So it will count the number of stuff that are uh, that are uh, true, okay. Oops, sorry. All right, there you go. So the sum will be the number of things that are true, and then it will have, because we want to divide it by the length of the number of element, so we could do divided by three there, but it's actually equivalent to just asking for the mean of this true and false vector. So far, so good. Yes. Okay. So now with this in mind, what we do is that we rewrite the sequence similarity in NumPy. So there we have sec A, sec B, and then we just say sec A equal equal sec B dot mean. And that's it. Check equality and compute the mean of this equality. And that's all there is to it. There is no further stuff. And now the little thing that we have to do then is that we want to then use the little trick that I've given to you there. So if we want to transfer a string to a NumPy array, so if we just do np.array of atggca, we see that it doesn't really work. It's an array with a single element, which is just everything that we have there. So that's not what we would like. What would what we would like is to have that separated. So we had we have to add this this little additional step of transforming to a list and then this. And that's when now we get an actual array with each letter being distinct. Okay, so that's the little trick, and this is the trick that I have given you there to transform a string into an array. You can use this. So with that, we have the two elements that we need. So the first is just that one. And then we first have the LSEC, we transfer it to NumPy arrays of characters. And then is here the same thing. So we do the sequence similarity NumPy and so on and so and that's it. Okay, so I'm going to first do this one. Then I do the two check to verify that they give the same thing. All right. So indeed, this gives the same result. And I can check visually on a very simple example that they do. And then finally, I can test the two against one another. And what I have experimented when I tested this thing is that I get about a times four speed up. Okay. So while this run, I know that many of you tried okay here only five times three so i know that many of you tried then uh numpy but you did not see an improvement um what did you do when you tried to switch to numpy please write or raise hand and and speak to tell us how you tried to tackle that and why you think maybe that didn't work Yeah, I have to find for a bit. Well, I created two numpy arrays for the sequences, and then I compared that and summed it up. But that was much too complicated. It was 
for uh, individual statements. Yeah. Okay, so you did you did the comparison with the for loop maybe or something like this? Uh, I can paste it. Ah, yes, I think I I think I see. Yeah, it's super. And complicated. that might that that might be uh, then a bit uh, a bit complex on the yeah. stuff, especially since there, what you would do is that you would then switch. Uh, you would convert the sequence from string to list mm -hmm. um, several times each time because you do n square operation. So yeah, each sequence yeah. would be transferred from string to list n times. And this is costly operation that then if you if you had pre-done it once as I do here, then I think that you might see better performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, as you can see, it can be sometimes a bit tricky and we have to think. And that's where sometimes also if you saw that you could use profiling to try and see what is the function. Like is it the call to list or the call to equal that takes the most time. And then you would see that it's maybe the call to list. So the transfer from one to the other, and then you would work on reducing the redundancy there. So it's also kind of a process, mm. but yeah, could try otherwise. Okay. So then we get, we do get a speed up. Okay. So right. Numba, not easy here. We do get a speed up. And then of course, as I've shown, if you also apply the little, <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> the little trick here, I do it slightly differently that one than what I did before. But if you just ensure that you don't compute the same thing twice all the time, well, then you can also multiply by two your speed up just because you don't do redundant computations. Okay, so you get something better. Now, are there questions about this NumPy optimization? Stuff that you may have done differently or stuff that are still a bit unclear. None? All right. Yes. So there was a quick question about uh, broadcasting. Um, I've pasted there the link uh, in the chat uh, to explain what broadcasting is. I surely don't think I can do a better job than what they do at explaining what broadcasting is, because I think that they do a very good job. In that particular case, it's not going really to help you broadcasting, uh, because as we have seen, what we want to do uh, is to is to is to just you know compare two vectors which are the exact same size. We had broadcasting refers in NumPy to the rules that happen when you have when you try to do operations on vectors which are not of the same size, okay? And then NumPy has a number of small rules, but basically what it does is that it tries to find dimensions where the arrays onto which you try to try to do the um, the aspect have a similar uh, as have a similar size or have a size which is what? That's what they say here. They go through all the shapes. So let's say you have a 2D or 3D array and they go through all the dimensions that you have and try to find some that fit or where one is equal, such that if you try to multiply an array, which is 3D gets an image 256 by 256 pixels times three for your R, G and B, red, green, blue, uh, channels. If you multiply it by a vector of size three, it will understand that this three correspond to that three, and then it will just multiply each to each uh, element to each element in kind of such that you have one uh, number that applies to each of the colors. All right. So that's the sort of rules, but there they are not really what we want to use because we want to compare two things which are the exact same size. And that's why we can just simply say this equals that, and that does the test for us. Okay. Uh, two, 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 two. All right. Um, so I think that this was a question from Tess. Uh, Tess, does that sort of clarifies what you what you wanted, or did you have further questions? 
Yes, thank you. Yeah, I think I just overcomplicated for myself. I was trying to make a smaller similarity array and applying it to the original. Mm. Yeah. I see. I to me it's also yeah, it's a fairly common thing that when we start playing with these libraries, we tend to go very complex and in when in fact actually and that's one of the beauty and the elegance of these libraries that they can at least for NumPy and Numba, is that they are deceptively simple sometimes. It's a sort of solution that they offer to us. Okay. And that can take a bit of like a while sometimes to get used to, to do something simple again. Okay. Right. So that was for uh that was for NumPy. Yes, Tess? Oh uh, no, not I just want to say thank you. All right, so now the next one that we have is Scython. And in Scython, what I just said don't apply is that in Scython, things are complicated, okay? Um, that's one of the ugly reality of Scython is that it's, yeah, it's not always easy to play with. So first off, I just here did something relatively simple where I just um, did some simple typing and uh, mostly, so I did the typing and then I just replaced the Python string and their typing will be str. So it's simple Python typing. There is a smarter way of typing them. I will show it just next, uh, but it's a bit more complex to play with. So I'll start with a simple one. Okay, so this is the exact same thing as what we have done earlier. Then this here is str, str. And then inside there, you see that we are kind of back to our native Python. Okay, and I just do here for, you know, element in and so on and so forth. And my goal is to have this uh, be a fully typed function. Now there, inside that one, I've done the same thing again. You say here, this is the exact type of code than what we had before we, with our pairwise distance. So I copy pasted that from, uh, I think that was this example there. We can find the exact same style. Okay. And then here, this is the link between the two functions. So nothing too, too, too crazy there. Okay. Now then what we see when it has compiled is that it's not too, too bad, but then it has some difficulty in there. And if you delve a little bit in that, you see that it's mostly to do with this string there. So with all of these elements there, each time you have a reference to one of the string here, it's unhappy because it's still a Python string. So it tries to access it and that creates interaction between C and Python elements. Otherwise it's not too unhappy. All right, so then, with that, when you execute this, you will see that already still, you do get a good speed up. So here, just uh, right now, um, by, uh, sorry, while while playing with that one, I had a speed up of nine, okay? Which is now, because that's um, without the little uh, divided by two trick. So that's actually three times faster than the speed up that we had uh, that we add with uh, with a uh, numpy, if I'm not mistaken, right? So now we really have a nice speed, up. and that's as I said, one of the nice uh, thing that there is with Python is that you have more leeway when it comes to the way that you want to do the optimization, and so it's a bit more flexible than Numba because with Numba, if you don't, you if you are not, you know, in the right proper configuration that Numba likes. Well, tough not, right? It's it's it can be hard to correct. But Cython, you can always play around. Now, with Cython, we can go more complex. We can always go a bit more complex with Cython up to the point where we write pure C++, but hey. So here, I will go a bit further. And what I do here mostly is that I switch from the Python type string, which caused problem earlier, to the C type, which is a character array, which is written like this. If you know a little bit of C or C++, this will speak to you. For the others, this is how we represent a 
pointer, so something that references some characters. It might be one, it might be several. In this case, it's several, right? That's just a difference of type. You see that the rest of the code is unaffected. Yeah, it's only this that changes. So it's really kind of a size and trick whenever you work with strings, okay? And next, what we also need to do is that we need to ensure that the string that we give there are properly encoded to be understood uh, by, uh, by Cython. And this one took me a bit of a time to understand how to do that and how to do that efficiently. But that's basically, I think, the simplest way of doing that. I just convert it to an a UTF-8, and that seemed to interface very well. Uh, with then uh, C code. So I do this, and now when I compile, you see that now my functions are pure C, okay? Except for, of course, when you get in and get out of it, but otherwise it's proper C. And then there as well, you only have a few interactions there, but they are fairly limited, okay? So now in two, let's say in two levels, I'm able to achieve better and then even better performance. And if you execute that, then you see that you have a speed up of here I achieved 17, but during my test, when I didn't have zoom to slow me down, I achieved a 21 times speed up. So now I'm seven times faster than the NumPy implementation itself. So I really get the best speed up there. Right. So that's the Cython one, which I think that here, when it comes to not changing the problem too much, yields the best result. Do you have any comments or any further ideas which you thought about, but you have not seen me test and maybe we can discuss that together. I know that I have one further idea that I want to show you. Nothing for no, maybe, or maybe you're just frantically typing on your keyboard. Well, before we end this exercise session and go on a well-deserved break, let me show you what I you know, think is also a good way of going at it. I told you repeatedly, Numba is super, super good with numbers, but it's not very good with strings. Well, then, one the reaction that you could have with that is to say, let's shift the problem around and say that we want to work not with strings, but with numbers, all right? We have A, T, G, and C, okay? And that shifts that to numbers, zero, one, two, three. Okay, let's, without even thinking too, too much, right? So that's what I tried. Okay, sometimes, you know, you go for a very simple idea and it's nice. So I just made a simple function, okay, which has dictionary zero, one, two, three, okay, and then you just give it a string and it changes the ATGCs for zero, one, two, three in the form of arrays. And then I just create a function to automatically change a list of these to a list of arrays. So for instance, AAAGC becomes zero, 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 Two three or zero um, a t a g g zero one zero two two. Okay, so far so good. All right, so we have one person still alive. That's good to know. For the others, don't hesitate to use the reaction to show your enthusiasm. I would say. Okay, so. Right, so now we have that. Now the question is, will that still work? Uh, if we come back to our code, I will not come back to it. Oh, also, yeah, I will. Actually, I think it's, it's quick enough to see. So if we come back to our code, actually, we see that there is nothing specific to, to string there. There is nothing that forces us. I mean, this bit of code should work the exact same way if you have numbers or if you have strings. All right, and that's one of the beauty of Python sometimes, I would say. So from there, we can just come back uh, to our code and just say, okay, now I 
get that. I try Numba, the Numba implementation, I give it the string version, and now I give it the string version, but that has been transformed to an integer, so basically that. And we will first check, of course, that we get the exact same result, right? You can also do the other check, and you will verify that indeed you do get the same result. So once you are quite happy with that, you can say, okay, right, now, now that I've seen that, now I can check which one is the fastest. And actually, when you do that, you see that you go from something that is worse to something that is actually much, much, much better. And with that, we are, I think this is about the same performance as the best uh, Scython, right? Yeah, it's about the same thing, right? So it's about a 16, 17 speed up. So now just by changing, just by shifting around what is the data type that we play with, we see that we have gained a ton of performance. And last but not least, of course, we want to be as fair as possible. And so you can't just count this because you have to also count the fact that you have to then apply this function that transforms from uh, the sequence of the strings to an in a set of integers. And this in itself can take a bit of time. Here you see, it's really not negligible. It's about 25%. So in fact, this whole solution there takes about 25 milliseconds. So it's slower than Scython, but you see it's getting there. It's very comparable. And also it has asked me fairly minimal the development, I just still have my at JIT on the original function. And I then just had to think of the trick of switching from string to integers. And these could also maybe, I think that that might be sped up. I think I could make this a bit faster uh, and apply a couple of more tricks. So I, I might be able to get myself slightly lower than uh, than the than the Numba implementation uh, than the Cython implementation, I think if I applied more time on it optimization, but yeah, that's a good remark and that's a good thing too. Okay, so now you have seen. I hope that I've shown you different ways to go at this. I've shown you also how different libraries can have sometimes different areas where they might shine, okay? And that sometimes there is some catch. I think that here, uh, transforming to Integer worked and that was lucky for me, but for more complex operations, I'm absolutely certain that it would, I the Numba in the end will not work that much and that the Scython would be the one that shines, okay? So it really depends on what sort of operation you want to do and how deep you want to go as well.